Hello Arcticus, welcome back to the Arctic Beyond. So you might have seen some headlines going around the news in recent weeks. Headlines like dramatic slowdown in melting sea ice surprises scientists. No statistically significant decline in sea ice extent since 2005. Minimal Arctic sea ice loss in the last 20 years. Putin gifts motorcycle to Alaskan man, he has no idea why. As you'd expect with headlines such as these, the climate sceptics have jumped on board this research with glee, calling people like me who talk about the melting sea ice liars, fearmongers, idiots. That's only partially true. So this bears the question, what's going on? Is the Arctic really healing? Is the Arctic not in danger anymore? Is everything going to be fine? Was all the climate change speculation? Wrong? Was it a, a blatant lie? Were people just trying to make money off of you? Will the next Spider-Verse film come out before the next Game of Thrones book? All the pressing questions of our time. First of all, the piece of research itself. So the quick summary of the research is that if we look at the September sea ice extent for the Arctic Ocean, we can see that the rate of sea ice loss last year is very, very similar to what it was in 2005. So we've been losing sea ice at about a rate of 300,000 square kilometers per decade, which is about the rate we were seeing 20 years ago. So we do need to confirm what the research is saying. So some headlines have been trying to say that the Arctic is not losing any sea ice anymore. That's incorrect. It's just saying that we are still losing sea ice every single year. We are still losing sea ice all the time. It's just not losing any faster than it was 20 years ago. Grandma's still getting shorter every year, but she's not getting shorter any quicker than when she was 50. The Arctic isn't healing. Polar bears aren't going to start suddenly spreading around the world like the sharks in under Paris. And the sea ice overall in the Arctic has still reduced by half since we started measuring it. Well, then that begs the question, why? It's because, and I say this knowing full well, I am opening up such a conspiratorial can of worms by saying this, it's because of natural climate variation. I was right, I knew it! Yes, yes, I know, I know. The climate change skeptics, they all say the climate changes normally. And that's the whole reason for climate change as we see it. And no one should ever worry about anything. The climate does change naturally. Yes, it does. Of course it does. So right now, what we're under is a natural variation in ocean temperatures in the Arctic. The Pacific and the Atlantic, they're always on the move. And we get these periods when you get a few decades where warm water is prevented from entering the Arctic Ocean. It's just kept within the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. It doesn't enter the Arctic. Well, it doesn't enter it so much. And so it keeps the temperatures naturally cooled, which this is good news. Well, this calls for a celebration. I will. That is genuinely good news. Well. That the Earth has these natural processes of keeping things in some kind of balance. It's good to know that even when greenhouse gas emissions are skyrocketing faster than my obsession with K-pop demon hunters, and the Earth is getting hotter than Genu from K-pop demon hunters, that the Earth has these natural ways of some way keeping things in check. So we can just keep on doing whatever we want, right? The Earth will be our designated driver, holding our hair back while we projectile vomit methane out the window into some poor Pacific island. This is not low fat! Oh my god, just spit it out, no. spit it, spit it. You're my best friend. You're my best friend. Except, no. Not really. The ocean temperature cool down isn't a reaction to what we're doing. It's just a naturally occurring process. This happens sometimes, and we've just gotten really lucky. The last time we had such a similar cool down period was from about 1960 to 1980. So let's have a look at what happened the last time a cool period ended. That can give us a good idea of what might happen when this one ends. Okay, ice melt increased from about 2% per decade to 13% per decade. Boy, that escalated quickly. Okay, um... So uh, if, if this cool period could, you know, not end, I'd, I'd pretty much appreciate that. 
Well, let's have a look how was it different during the last cold period and how this cold period has done. Then we can really see how things are going to change. Maybe they'll be better this time, right? So if the ice level change back then was about two to three percent per decade, and if climate change and human caused climate change really is a scam, then this cold period should be the same as the last one, right? Because human caused climate change doesn't make a difference, doesn't exist. Natural climate variation should tell us that the last naturally cool period should react the exact same way as this natural cool period. That is what the climate change skeptics tell us. So let's look into that. Let's see how it's gone. And in the worst news that climate change skeptics have heard since the release of Ice Age, the meltdown. Oi. This global warming is killing me. This is too hot. The ice age was too cold. The current cold period has had a rate of ice melt about double that of the last cold period at about 4.7 to 5.7% loss per decade. So even in what you could consider is the best possible optimal solution for the Arctic environmentally speaking, we're still losing double the amount of ice as we were during the last nice cold period. This was the time. This, this was the time for the Arctic to show signs of recovery, to bounce back from the hot period and to really say, look, the Earth has its natural balance of things. It goes warm for a bit, it goes cool for a bit, but it sorts itself out in the end. This was the time. It's not done that. One of the authors of the study, Dr. Mark England, even says himself that this is only a temporary reprieve. The current cool period has only about a 25% chance of lasting for another decade. Last time a cold period ended, the rate of ice melt increased by about five to six times. And the models are saying that that 12 to 13% ice loss per decade we saw during the last warm period could be eclipsed, could be much higher during what comes next. Just another note regarding this study though, is that it did look at ice cover. So it took satellite images, it looked at satellite images and said, okay, looking down at the earth, there's ice here, there's ice here, there's ice here. Oh, there's a bit of ice there. There's a polar bear. I love polar bears. That would be me if I were doing it. But that's what they were doing. It didn't so much take into account the thickness of the sea ice. To a degree looked into it, they make a note of it in the discussion of the study, so they, they do highlight it, but it's not what it was really looking at, and it doesn't take into account the ice during this cold period, when okay, the rate of sea ice loss wasn't changing, it was getting thinner. The sea ice was fully on board the Ozempic trend in the last 20 years and was getting thinner by the day. Unlike someone on Ozempic though, it's gonna keep getting thinner. I would argue that how thick the sea ice is, is almost just as important as how much we can see based on a satellite photo. If the ice is too thin, it can't sustain the life that lives on the sea ice and underneath the sea ice. It can't absorb light and reflect light to the same degree, which helps cool the earth. It effectively does not function in the ways we need the Arctic to do. And I can barely feel my slushy while I watch Balto 3 for the ninth time. And even if you take this study with all the most positive, great good news as possible, sea ice isn't the only ice in the Arctic. No more ice. This isn't saying that Arctic ice, all the ice in the Arctic, isn't melting any faster. It's just saying sea ice. One kind of ice. You're forgetting all the glaciers. You're forgetting the Greenland ice sheet. You know, that thing that Donald Trump thinks that hiding underneath it is just the world's biggest golf course. Arctic glaciers are suffering the worst of all the world's glaciers. And the Greenland ice sheet is shrinking faster than we've ever seen it before. It gushes out 30 million tons of fresh water into the ocean every single hour. I understand the temptation to look at these headlines to say, oh, it's good news, it's finally, finally good news, something to hold on to. I get the temptation to even take that feeling and turn it into anger. To look at people like me or much better scientists than I ever was and to say, look, you are wrong. You are wrong. You told us all this bad news. You made me feel bad for having to sacrifice bits of my quality of life. And now look, I can do whatever I want and I can live how I want. I get it. But this piece of research isn't some 
revelation that proves the Trump level denial of climate change has been real all along. It's fascinating, it's great, and if anything it should prove that science is on all of our sides. If you're someone who chooses only to take in certain bits of news, to cherry pick what news they accept into them, this goes to show that science gives you all sides of the story. When the science which supports your point of view, great, I'm happy for you that you found a piece of science that supports your point of view, but you can't then ignore science which doesn't support your point of view. It's either all of it or none of it. What this research really truly shows is that we've had a decades long grace period to get our shit together. And I desperately hope I'm wrong, I think we've wasted it. Well, I hope this has helped dismiss some of the myths around those headlines. I hope you've learned something and maybe even enjoyed yourself. I hope if a climate change denier comes up to you and starts bragging because they finally chose to listen to one scientist, you can start reeling off facts and counter arguments like your RFK dispensing horse tranquilizers to children with the measles. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today. I genuinely appreciate it. I know I've not been very active lately, there's been a lot going on, I got new glasses. And how did you like being called Arcticus at the start? Hello Arcticus! I'm, I'm playing with some, playing with a, a name for us, uh, Arcticites, Arcticunos, that one might be taken. What do you think? You got a name for us? And let me know what you think about this research revelation. Does this signal a new healing age for the Arctic? Is science useless and just should be ignored all the time? Do you like my new glasses? What's my cat yelling about? Let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.